How's it going 3D printers? Andrew Sink here, and in this video we're going to be talking about 3D printing using recycled filament. I've been curious about printing with recycled PETG for a while, and after seeing the Greengate 3D Mars Red PETG, I decided to give it a shot. It's definitely an interesting material, and it's got a pretty cool backstory. Greengate 3D originally started as a polymers recycling company, so they have a lot of experience in the recycled polymer industry. We're going to pause for a moment and talk about what PETG filament is. PETG is a modified polyethylene, which is a material typically used in water bottles and other thin-walled, durable plastic parts. Because of its relatively high flow temperature and its tendency to string, it hasn't been a good choice for beginners. However, with advances to 3D printing software and hardware, PETG has become a viable 3D printing material for anybody looking for mechanical toughness who doesn't necessarily want to print ABS or ASA. One of the first things I noticed about the Greengate PETG is this stuff is shiny. This is Squizzle, a support-free swirl designed by Luby that I thought would make a good test print. It's a very organic shape, and it has a lot of gentle curves that I thought would be a good way to test out the filament. And it looks great. It's very difficult to even see the layer lines on it from more than a couple inches away, and overall, it's a very consistent print. So let's watch a time lapse. Okay, so why did this print fail? If you look carefully, you'll notice a lot of blobs, and this is caused by retraction moves on PETG, which tends to string and drip out from the extruder. This means filming a time lapse is difficult and causes a part that has a lot of blobs on it. Here we can see Chuck Hellebuck's calibration cube, and it looks pretty rough. The absolute worst is the bottom layer. You'll notice the infill didn't even connect with the outer wall. This is a result of printing quickly, something that the Prusa profile is tuned to do on the Mark III. When I turned the speed down to 80%, it laminated perfectly, and I got very consistent prints. You'll notice a very clear difference between the two. In addition to reducing the speed, using a glue stick on your PEI bed is a great idea, not just to promote adhesion, but also to allow you to remove the part after it's finished printing. Because of its high print temperature, PETG can really bite down on your print surface, so the glue stick allows you to create a barrier that makes popping it off a bit easier. You can see here my strategy for removing a part involves flexing the bed and then pulling the part off. Even on a geometric object like the decoration cube from my mini factory, the print quality is pretty high. You'll notice the part has some stringing on it, this is pretty common with PETG due to that high melt temperature, and this can be easily fixed. Using a hot air gun, we can remove the majority of these strings by applying a small amount of hot air to all the affected areas. You definitely want to be careful during this process. If you get hot air on your finger, you will know immediately. Once the stringing's been removed and the glue stick's been washed off, we have our final part. So overall, the Greengate PETG is a really cool concept for material. It's a recycled 3D printing filament that doesn't require a whole lot of technical expertise to use. That being said, I'm not sure I'd recommend it to beginners, it's definitely helpful if you have some experience so you know how to troubleshoot if something goes wrong. I've included a link to Greengate's site in the description of this video if you're interested in learning more about their filament or purchasing some to try out for yourself. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.